Hi, this is Chris. I was working out in my garden this morning. It was bright and sunny and it looked like it would be warm. And then the clouds pulled in and it got cold. So I finished planting my marigolds and then I came in the house. So I think I am going to finish this uh, page in my journal. This is my watercolor travel journal and I started it a couple years ago. And I just finished this one on the last video, the dead sagebrush. And I didn't finish this one. This is one that I did a couple years ago and the iris that I did. And some others and then there's a couple other unfinished ones. So I I want to get these finished before I get too many other paintings in the book. And this is a, a image of mule deer that was in my backyard. I have an open backyard on a bluff in the high desert and the mule deer like to come and sit under my pine trees. So I know you can't see the drawing. I'll put up, um, I'll take a photo of it and put that up so you can at least see the drawing. And Where's my water? Here's my water. This is my palette that I use mostly at home. And my brushes. So I want to do some background washes first. And I'll start out with the body of the mule deer. And, and I'll wet it with a light wash and then I'll come in with the darker washes. I believe this is a mixed media paper. don't remember exactly what I used. I made this book. I have videos on how I make my own art books. I call them my watercolor travel journals because what I really like to do is take them out on location and paint on location. And I haven't been able to do that lately. But I hope when the weather gets nice I can do that some more. This is going to be rather fast and sort of a loose painting. I don't want it to be a technical anatomical painting. I just want to get the image of the deer. This is a pronged buck. I didn't do the best job of drawing him. His feet are running off the page. Now while that dries I'm going to darken, gray out my browns and do the deer in the background who are standing in the shade. These deer are called mule deer because they have large ears like mules. And then over here we have an old pine tree. Continue to put in these shadows in the background and do a wash of those. The next thing I'm going to do is the foreground, the pine needles. This is all full of pine needles and pine cones and they're very sort of a reddy orange color.
and I will continue glazing wet over dry and build up my colors. I'll let that dry. I put my hair dryer on it, but I'll let it dry some more and I'm going to work on the bark of the tree trunks. I'm continuing to build up the layers, glazing. I added some pine cones in the forest floor litter, adding some more darks. I'm going to add some more darks in through here, probably in through here a little bit, and then I'll finish up the deer.
going to take some time now and do some detail in his head because that's the focal point of the whole painting and that's where I want most of the detail. Everything else can be washes. I finished my painting, at least for now, who knows, I may come back in a year or so and, and decide it needs something else and dabble on it. But um, I like it. It could be darker back here. You see his horns show up so well in the photograph because it was so dark in the, in the shade in the background. So I may come in and, and darken that up. But you may have noticed I didn't use any black. I don't have black on my palette. When I was first learning to use transparent watercolors, most of my instructors or workshop um, leaders always said that you don't use black or white pigments in transparent watercolor. You build up your colors into your darks and black will deaden it, white, white will pale it, take out the color, and black will just kill the color. So I used um, ultramarine and burnt sienna mostly for my darks. I kept the original date that I started this page and then added down at the bottom that I finished it today. So there's my mule deer. Another thing I wanted to uh, mention, I have mentioned this before, is I use these assorbent pads here. These can be either from um, a bed sheet or cut from the middle of a baby's diaper or a piddle pad. I got these piddle pads at um, my market. They were marked down. I can't remember. Oh, there's four pads for four dollars. So that's a dollar a pad. That's kind of expensive to me. They are, they are big. I mean, this this will last me forever. Um, I think you could probably get a package of one or two at the dollar store. But um, it's really good when your brush is really wet and you want to do some dry brushing. You can just squeeze it out on here. Or you can just press it like that and it draws a lot of the water out of your brush and then you can do dry brush. And sometimes I'll put down a wet wash and then immediately I want to dry brush just the edges of it. So it's really helpful to be able to pull all the water out of my brush. If you're interested in any of the tools that I use, I'll have them in the description below. These are the palettes that I use at home mostly. Um, these are all Winsor Newton and this one has some Holbein and some Daniel Smith paints in it that I use when I'm painting flowers with the vibrant colors. This is a collapsible water dish from Faber-Castell which I really like. This is great when I travel. It fits in my little travel basket. These are Banker's Clips. Um, I've had these for a long time. This is what we used to use before they came out with those little tiny clips. So now I think what I might want to do is take my pencil and just sharpen up some of these little lines in here. Not an outline, but just, just a little bit of a line. Another tip I like to share is when your brushes are wet, if they have a wooden handle, you want to dry them uh, horizontally, laying down. If you stick them into your um, brush bowl and they're wet, the water will soak down into the wood and the ferrule, this part here, will become loose and your brush won't last as long. If it has a plastic handle, it probably doesn't make any difference. Okay, so now I will clean up 
and show you a close up. Thanks for watching and have a great day painting. Bye bye!